Hey everyone, Vogg here. Hey, just wanted to put together a video that's actually going to pretty much just go through a quick tour of all the games that I have in my collection, just pretty much running through it. So if you want to check that out, stick around. Hello everyone, I'm just going to run through my games and call out some that I think are pretty interesting. Um, just so you know, I'm going to be pausing in some different areas, but if you see any you'd like, to, like me to discuss further, definitely let me know. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just going to leave it right here for a second, but first thing I wanted to note was the Diablo 2 gift set. That was a super cool gift that was given to me by a good friend. The box itself is larger, so it goes to the end, along with the Warcraft 3 Collector's Edition. Now followed by the Quake Mission Packs, Quake 2 and Quake 3. And those were lots of fun, as far as the LAN party games. Um, one note about Quake 2 is... Didn't really get the concept of the mouse at that time, so pretty much was just using the keyboard. You know, during those times, using the, the page up and page down to look up and down. And surprisingly, was able to hold my own fairly decently. But it didn't come until later, I think with, I think it was Half-Life, when I really started using the mouse for FPSs. And, but, man, who would have known, like, as far as what would have actually happened if I actually learned how to use the mouse in those games. Tribes 2 is another good game. Huge fan of Dynamics, so anything from them always held in the hell extremely high regard. Yeah, next one that I see over there was X-Wing. Many hours spent in that one, but TIE Fighter was always my favorite of the Star Wars Sims. And seeing here as far as the A-10 tank killer, that was more Dynamics gold there, in my opinion. Um, Loom was actually an uh, extremely sought after game. A bun down by Lucas Arts. Moving along. Oh, oh, there we are. Yeah, StarCraft and the Half-Life games. Oh man, those were the bulk of my LAN parties growing up. Half-Life pretty much, yeah, ever as as you know, pretty much had that never-ending replayability due to the mod community that game had. Man, original Counter-Strike, Day of Defeat, Firearms, Action Half-Life, man, that that list goes on. Yeah, black and white, that was another game that was way ahead of its time. Yeah, Icewind Dale, Neverwinter Nights. Yeah, pretty much a lot of those, a lot of those like Black Isle, Black Isle style games and just like the original D&D RPGs of that, during that era right there were like Baldur's Gate and everything. Man, those games I sunk a lot of time into. Those were always great classics. Oh, yeah, there's one I want to note about right there. Um, the Commodore Plus 4. That was probably one of my better finds. Um, that was actually in a garage sale way out in the country. You know, one of those types of garage sales where the people there were, were kind of questionable. Where, you know, it's like, I've... Uh, Maybe I'm going to be murdered. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up um, with that box. The box is in pretty decent shape, but man, the computer itself looks like it was never, ever used. Pretty much best $2 that I ever spent there. Falcon 3.0, another good one. Original Microsoft Flight Simulator with all the mission packs and everything there. That was That was a rare find. Found those all in the exact same exact same set there many many microprose games they did a lot of good flight sims and a lot of the strategy games back during that time as well now another ones i want to mention here are the 
Street Rod series of games that you see right here, those those two games. And the main thing about those ones is, man, those are extremely rare. I ended up lucking out when I found those. Um, the original Street Rod, you only have probably seen a few few listings that ever hit eBay, but um, those this, the original Street Rod there is actually sealed in the original packaging, so it's never been opened. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that crop up anywhere. Star Trek Phaser. <laughs> uh, King's Quest series of games. Um, that's one that I'm wanting to complete. Um, that's going to be a hard one just because there's so many. And, you know, trying to find those at garage sales or thrift shops, that's going to be, it's going to be a rough time coming there. Yeah, MechWarrior, MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries, um, Leisure Suit Larry, doesn't really need, not much else needs to be said about that. Oh, let's go back here. Yeah, the Aces, the Aces games, more Dynamics, Flight Sims Gold. Um, the Mail Order, the Mail Order copy of Doom that I talked about during the first episode. That's up at the top there. Uh, definitely check out that first episode if you haven't yet, where I talk that talk about that one in a little bit more detail. Keep on moving. Yeah, quest quest for glory. Um, that's going to be another one that's going to be hard to hard to complete. Um, I never really played quick. I never really played either of those two quest for glories, but I did play the original Heroes Quest and Quest for Glory two, and spent a lot of time in those ones. Uh, both good games, and hopefully. You know, when I get a chance, and be able to check out those ones as well. Ultima series is another one that I really want to complete. But again, there's so many and haven't really found my many still out in the wild, at least as far as locally. But it's ones that I'm still, still hunting for. So hopefully I can be able to click complete those soon. Uh, another one, Betrayal at Crondor. That's one that... I mentioned during the first episode as well. Um, great, another great dynamics RPG for sure. Yep, and four of the main microprose games all in the screen there. You know, Master of Magic, Master of Orion. I mentioned those guys during the first episode, but you know, still XCOM and Pirates Gold are two amazing, amazing games. Wing Commander, always great series. I still need to get the first one. The first one, I at least have two and three there. And I'm not probably worried about going beyond that because those are the main three that I played. Armada was a, a great game as well. That was more of a, if I remember right, that was like the turn-based strategy, if I remember right. And of course, you got Diablo and the Hellfire expansion there. And... Not much needs to be said about those ones. There are many, many hours were spent up in those ones. Have some high hopes for the Diablo 4. Well, we'll see how that one actually turns out. Red Baron, Red Baron 2, more Dynamics Golden. Let's see here. Oh, let's carry on. Flashback. Gold Neck series. Mute League Football. That was another that was another really fun sports game. A lot of fun for the couch multiplayer. I'll also Pirates Gold there. Never have enough copies of Pirates Gold. Of course, Shadowrun, uh, best game ever created. <laughs> Talked about that one during the first episode as well. So, Sonic games. At Target Earth, that's another. That's another good game. It's really, really hard, but yeah, definitely a game worth checking out. Um, not one I've seen around too too often. Um, I see it at the expos only occasionally. There might be more copies up there, but they get snatched up pretty quick. So that's why I say it hasn't been seen around too much. Both the Toe Jam and Rolls. I lucked out with those, got those for, for a dollar a piece. Vapor Trail is another good one. Now, not one couple games I want to bring up here is... Of course, um, Return Return Fire is a, one of my favorite multiplayer games on the PS1. Um, that game was probably has one of the best soundtracks, honestly, out of any game. 
Um, if you get a chance, definitely just check it out on YouTube, just as far as the soundtrack. It was all the the classic eras, you know, where you had flying around in helicopters, having Flight of the Valkyries playing and everything. And it was all like, you know, just epic orchestra music, no matter what you were doing. It was all themed based upon what you were doing. Um, another one, of course, uh, Crazy Crazy Ivan was a good one. That was probably one of the first games that I actually played on the on the original PlayStation when it came out. Um, completely underrated. I would definitely recommend checking that one out as well. And of course, all the classic consoles, those releases, definitely get those if you have a chance. Now, as far as when it comes to just like the overall play, PlayStation games, um, one I want to bring up, of course, right there, um, one of my biggest regret stories, and that actually revolves around Suikoden 2. The one I have there is not my original copy that I had. Um, the main reason it was considered one of my biggest regrets is after I originally beat the game, I ended up selling it to a friend for $10. Then of course, as the years went on, you just saw that just spike up in price and everything. And I wanted to get it again, um, but I'm not one to spend hundreds of dollars on a video game. I'm gonna be patient and wait for wait for the good deal. But it took took probably about 12 to 14 years to get back into my collection, where I lucked out with a a trade that I found that I was able to find at a garage sale for 25 cents and. Training it into a video game store, that was my copy again. So my copy of Sweet Into was cost me 25 cents and I'll I'll take it. Silent Hill, of course. One game there, general general chaos, fun fun Genesis RTS. A lot of good multiplayer laughs there as well, that's for sure. Got all the Shining Force games there, for sure. How many times have those been re-released? But never a bad thing. Play those when you can. Now right there, I'm sorry it's a little bit blurry, but that was one of my main collection, main sets that I was able, able to complete that I was super excited about, and that was the um, Dungeons & Dragons, the four Dungeons & Dragons games for the NES. Um, I ended up luckily finding... The first one that I found was the most rarest one, which was Hillsfar, um, but it took me years to find the other three, surprisingly. You know, I found Polar Radiance fairly quickly afterwards, but the Heroes of the Lands and Dragon Strike, man, those ones were hard to find, especially when I'm just pretty much doing my own hunting and not buying anything online. Archon's a good game. Oh, Bionic Commando, great soundtrack there. Um, not one I, it was a fun game, not one I've ever beat though. You know, once it gets those later levels, oh man, does it get crazy. Bucky O'Hare was probably one of my, probably one of my more rare games that I have for the NES. Um, I don't have anything insanely, insanely rare, but like Bucky O'Hare and a couple one couple other ones down. Most of the other ones are fairly common or uncommon games. Castlevania games always hold a very soft place in my heart for sure. Love those games. And of course, you know, Contras as well. Now, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Warrior 2 was probably the main game that I played out of that series. Um, I hear great things about Dragon Warrior 4, but never really do dove into that one. Um, hopefully when I find those, maybe I can be able to dive into that and see what all the fuss is about there. Ghost Lion. Most of... <laughs> Ghost Lion being pretty much like the most misleading box art of all time. If you've never seen that box art, go check it out and then look at gameplay of it and just kind of leaves you mostly confused. <laughs> I 
North and South is a good game for sure. Well, Metal Gear, another game that I talked about during my first episode. You know, that follow, that's followed by the Mega, the Mega Man set. Um, that's a series that took many, many years to complete, as fully complete as well. Um, I ended up having most everything except the fifth one, and I waited a few years for the fifth one. Um, but I ended up just biting the bullet that one and, you know, spending more than I normally like to to complete the set at a video game store. But, you know, it was worth it for that completion, though. The Lolo games was a good find as well. That was, those are fun games. The Akari Warriors games is definitely ones to <laughs> bring up as well. Gunsmoke. Russian Attack. That was a good arcade game, you know, followed, followed by Riger as well. Man, the music in that game, so memorable. <laughs> Shadow of the Ninja, that was, that was a good one that I found. Um, surprisingly, I ended up actually buying that from Pat the NES Punk up at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Um, I ended up picking it up and had some desperation in my eyes, you know, trying to get a, get a good deal out of it, but... Man, thanks to that man for looking out. He he gave me the hookup and very, very worthwhile and I'm super excited to have that in my collection. Stack up. Another sought after game. Um still still looking for to find Rob and haven't found him yet. But that's something I'm been definitely on the lookout for for quite some time. You know, hopefully I'll get lucky one of these days on that one. Another one of my favorite NES games right there, um, Super Dodgeball. Oh man, absolutely fun game that I actually still play fairly commonly. Um, kind of have a ongoing challenge in that game with one of my friends I work with. We have a arcade machine at our work, and so on our breaks and everything, we at least go to the arcade machine, try to get, you know one maybe two matches in during our breaks and everything but usually i decimate my friend on that one but he's finally starting to get some few tricks up his sleeve and you know manages to take me out occasionally <laughs> kudos to you if you know if you know who i'm talking about super mario games not much else needs to be said that hasn't been said there's absolutely amazing And the Tecmo, Tech Mobile series, always, always good. Numerous Wheel of Fortune games. <laughs> Willow, you idiot. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, that's a little bit blurry there. Oh, Killer Instinct. Yeah, great. One of my great fighting games, one of the top fighting games, you know, right up there next to Street Fighter, in my opinion. And of course, Shadowrun. I'm just going to say not as good as the Genesis version, in my opinion, but <laughs> still an absolutely amazing game. And, you know, most is probably going to disagree with me on that one, but it's, it's okay to be wrong, I guess. <laughs> Oh, UN Squadron, definitely a game worth checking out if you haven't played it. A lot of replayability on that one, that's for sure. Donkey Kong Country's Final Fantasy games, you know, not much, again, not much else needs to be said about those ones. Final Fantasy, probably, you know, some of the most top RPGs ever. Final Fight games were, were good as well. Say probably uh, noting games to note on here is you know lucked out on the 
on the Xeno Saga 2 and Xeno Saga 3 find. Actually ended up finding those together in a remote area thrift shop. And both of those copies are fairly, fairly well meant and close, close to new, you know, except for being, not being sealed and everything, but lucked out with, you know, only spending a few dollars a piece on those. Mark of Cree was a very good game. Our, oh, go back, go back there. Yeah, that was games I wanted to mention there. The Snowblind RPG games. Those are some probably my favorite PS2 games there. Um, you know, the Baldur's, Baldur's Gate games, the Champions of Norath games, um, some good action RPGs. You know, I was expecting, you know, before knowing about them, I was expecting you just to be like normal Baldur's Gate style games that I played on the PC and everything, but no, drastically different and, you know, definitely action RPG oriented. So definitely check those out if you haven't. Knights of the Old Republic. Those are good ones for sure. Check those out if you haven't. Oh, oh, whoops, I went back. Sorry. Now, one game I want to mention here, um, if you haven't had a chance to play it, probably one of the absolute best multiplayer games for the GameCube, and that's actually Pac-Man Versus. Um, pretty much requires the use of the Game Boy Advance, where the one running on the Game Boy Advance sees all the entire Pac-Man map, and they're playing as Pac-Man while the other three are actually playing as ghosts on the TV. And oh my lord, it gets rowdy playing that game. Lots of laughs and super fun if you have four people to play that game with. Oh. Demon Souls? That's... <laughs> Uh, not good at those games. I don't have the patience. Well, that's uh, yeah, my N64 games. Um, needed a way to pretty much maximize my space, so that's that's how they're set. Um, I do have some good ones in there, like Ogre Battle 64, have StarCraft in there, um, all the Turoks, of course Goldeneye. <laughs> But, you know, if you want me to do a video on those where I break those out and you can be able to see all of them, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Just let me know. Um, but that's pretty much the end of it. Um, hope you enjoyed this time. And till next time, I bid you adieu.